How's it going, coaches? Um, as you come in tonight, it's set up for you automatically to be um, to be on mute. If you want to join the conversation, just make sure you turn the mute function off. You'll be able to speak. We're going to give everybody a couple of minutes uh, to join in, and then uh, then we'll get this ball rolling pretty soon. Coach Nichols, how we doing this evening? Doing well, man. How are you? Doing well. Coach Fields, good to have you back. Hey, how's it going? Doing great, man. Doing great. Hey, Coach Deweese, it's Michael Bell again. Still yes, sir. Still no video. I got the audio. It's still no video. It's just going to be a blank screen right there, right? Not a problem. So, Coach Corley, welcome back. Yes, sir. How we doing, Coach? Doing well, man. Doing well. So I see guys starting to pile in. We'll give it just a minute, and um, and we'll get the ball rolling. As we get started tonight, really what I want to do, and for anybody that's joining us for the first time, um, I'm, I'm kind of driving the car, but um, I, I want input as far as what direction you guys want to go. Um, if you have something to share, we want you to share. Um, I do have some questions that I know that I want to kind of start with, and um, – and, and make sure that, that we kind of cover. And I know I want to get feedback from some of you guys as well. Um, but uh, as, as we kind of get this thing rolling, like I said, if you got, um, if you got anything to add, um, you know, feel, feel free to step in if you have questions to ask. Um, I want this to be a deal. I mean, I'll sit here and talk the whole time, but I want to learn from you guys. I would very much prefer that I, uh, I get, get some, some stuff from you. So, um, that's kind of uh, kind of what the plan is. Like I said, if this is your first time joining us, and I know we got a couple um, that I, I think are. Um, so it's a little after eight now. We're, we've got 12, 13 people in. I know some more have sent text and said that they'll be on shortly after eight. Um, so I kind of want to just kind of get started. Um, if you don't know me, if you are new to this, I am Pete Deweese. I'm the offense coordinator at Sprayberry High School in Marietta, Georgia. Um, we've done, you know, a handful of these now, covered some different topics. Um, but um, Coach Milana suggested after the last one that we talk red zone offense. And it, it's something that I, I um, had on my list to try to cover anyway. So I thought that now is as good of a time as any. Um, what, what I really wanted to start with first was kind of a question for some of you guys. I know personally when I sit down and I'm, I think call sheet, um, I, I kind of have a plan from the 25 to the five, and then I have a plan when I'm on the five and in. Um, and, and for me, most of what I'm going to do from the 25 to the 25 or to the five doesn't deviate a whole lot from what we're going to do in the open field. There may be some wrinkles um, thrown in, but obviously once we get down inside the five, things change a little bit. So I, I just kind of wanted to ask you guys, how do you break down the red zone? Do, do you, you know, when you get inside the 10, does the mindset change? When you get inside the five, um, or does the mindset never change? You know, that's kind of the first question, I guess, that I, I have for some of you guys. Um, I know for me, once we start getting down around the 30 or 25, I'm going to start looking to, uh, to take a shot. Um, but once we get down um, maybe a little closer around the 15, I feel like when I watch film, I've got a tendency to maybe be a little bit more conservative until I get myself into a third down or have got the green light on fourth down. Um, so, so talk to me, guys. How, how do you, when you're preparing offense and your game plan each week, um, how do you prepare for the red zone? Um, how, do you, how do you break it down as far as field position and maybe personnel thoughts and, and, and things like that? I'll go ahead and start. Um, what I try to do is I put about 10 to 15 plays on my call sheet, uh, and they change every week. Uh, to try to avoid tendencies uh, as far as red zone tendencies. Um, and the big thing I use, and I, I use it everywhere on the field, but I want to use motion as much as possible. Uh, it helps our quarterbacks identify man zone. Um, and we want to attack, um, which our, our offense is built to attack at all times. Uh, but we want to attack as much as possible when we're inside the, inside the red zone. We really want to 
we obviously have to keep in mind, um, you know, we can't attack as much vertically as we normally do. Uh, so we, you know, we, we still want to stay in that attack mode. We definitely want to use motion and just kind of keep you off balance, but I'm going to definitely going to change up my, my 10. I use it every week, uh, week to week, just to make sure I don't, I don't develop any tendencies. So you said you carry 10 to 15 each week, coach. Is that right? Yes sir. yes, sir. Do you build those into a specific day of practice? Is it something you start building a package in the summer? How do you how do you work it? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say we have to work them. They they all come from our base package. Um, I'm not I'm not drawing up anything that's crazy. Uh, but one week we may you know just for you know terminology verbiage. You know we one one week it may be sale. One week it may be sluggo. One week it may be spacing. And then the next, the next week, you know, you may go smash, you may go, you know, shallow, you may go cross. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, those are base, base, base. So if you don't know that, you don't play. So, but now I may, in the red zone, I may shift to three, uh, three by two, or I may shift uh, to a four by one. Um, but we're still going to run our base stuff. For sure. Anybody else? How we did stuff this past season is I, I went big formation in the boundary once I hit the 22. Yep. Uh, the reason my yardage changed from like 25 to 5 or 20 to 10 or whatever, um, I worked for a guy who's now with the Denver Broncos. Uh, and his was always 22 to 13, 13 to 7, 6 in. And it just kind of stuck with me. Um, and with that, you know, we would do a lot of formation and boundary and out of each of those, what, I mean, what that does is one, if you got a speedster, you got the whole field with numbers. Two, high school defenses, FIB is pretty tough uh, in terms of spacing and crack replacement and things like that. And then three, it, it really kind of broke the, or simplified our play calls. We really only went in with four from, from, for every five yards. Uh, and one would be a shot, one would be a guaranteed pass, and then two different gap schemes, one that's like a false read and then one that's true. Uh, and it would just kind of depend on who our personnel was, who had the hot hand, so on and so forth. So really, and how we would practice it, um, is as soon as our stretch is done, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we go straight into a red zone or a two-minute hop. Uh, that was something that our head coach did that I fell in love with, and it kind of got the tempo of practice right where you wanted it to before you go into Indy or things like that. And live versus the defense, you call yours, they call theirs. Yeah, we, 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 sometimes we do live. Sometimes we do with, uh, we call yeah. it, with stud. You know, yeah. we, we do all sorts of different tempos with it. It just kind of depends on where we are in season. Similar. Yep. Yep. I, I, I've, we've, we occasionally start practice like that. If, if we don't do it at the beginning, we throw it in somewhere. Um, it, it, it's always a great way to rep your stuff, especially – if, like Coach Fields was saying, if you're relying so much on, on your base package, right, it, it's a great way to get it in. And the thing we talk about all the time and our defense coordinator talks about all the time especially is, you know, it's about playing fast, right? I can sit there and script all the cards I want. At the end of the day, you know, we, when we get down tight on a Friday night, we're getting the pressure. The question is, is it, you know, tendency show do they have something they love or is it kind of a flavor of the week and is it based on what you do specifically um and and there's a lot of merit i think to just getting your kids to understood uh, understand um how to play fast regardless of what they see and you know i've always thought that if i do a good job of of building the offense or, or creating a scheme as a staff with rules that our kids can live in that we're always going to give them a chance to be successful if they understand how to apply those rules so I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, coaches, any, anybody else got any input as far as how they treat red zone and their their week-to-week -week preparation? Well, I sit there and go from 20 to 20. I'm generally stretching vertically. When I get inside that red zone now, I want to start stretching horizontally. Get, use the field that's available to me. Right. So I'll start like if I'm on the left hash, I'll go in tight formations and then just flood or run everything to the outsides and, and just kind of use that much field as much as I can. Yep. You know, I, I think obviously the, the amount of field space you have is capped when you get down in there tight. I, I think that um, what I tell my quarterbacks a lot of times when we get down inside the 15 is clearly we don't have a lot of, a lot of grass to throw into, um, but we still can attack the defense with vertical routes, right? I, I, you know, love wheel routes down in there tight, especially off of motion with man-to-man, -man. Um, but – 
even, you know, for us, we're going to compress you and we're going to give you corner routes and we're going to give you post routes. And we tell our receivers, it's got to happen fast. You better have a good stem. But, you know, they're typically vertical attacking routes. We just have to understand how the leverage changes and where the ball placement, how fast it's got to get out um, when we're down in there tight. But I, I, I've tried to be very conscious of that with my quarterbacks. And I feel like, um, feel like the past two years, we've done a good job of that, of them understanding, um, you know, we, we, we want to still have a vertical mindset and mentality when we're down there. We just have to understand where that ceiling is. Um, and, and, you know, I think sometimes I think that – I know there's been times in my career where I've probably taught and thought too much horizontal, you know. And, um, and there are certainly things we have in where it's all about, you know, the front pylon and let's try to get a horizontal stretch and get to it. Um, but I think that shift in mentality for us of, you know, how can we take vertical routes and just squeeze them into that space has been good for us um, offensively. Anybody else? Just trying to get behind the chains. Yep. That's my biggest thing is I'm trying to be real careful and not get behind the chains because once you do that, then you've got a whole new set of problems. Yes, you got yes, you got to throw the ball down there sometimes on first first down, but you just need to be careful about that. You know, you get, you get yourself in trouble when you don't do that. So, you, you know, and, you, uh, you know, because like you said, the field is compressed and you got to be, you got to be smart about the vertical stuff. You know what I mean? Because the field gets small in a hurry. Well, and, and you've always done a good job, Coach Allen. I know, Jake, I know you can attest to this. You know, you've always done a great job of finding numbers to attack with your mid-zone game and, and then obviously with your counter as well. Um, but, you know, I, that that's, that's the other thing to me. I, I think sometimes – you know, people get out of their rhythm when they get down in there because they feel like they have to be cute. If you can yeah. find numbers, you got numbers, man. Take exactly. it all day long. Yeah, but don't. Yeah, you can't panic. You can't just change who you are when you get down there. Yep. You know, you just you, you got to be you got to be smart about that. You know, and, and so many people do that. They go, oh, we get we got to be somebody totally different. You know, and I, I don't believe that because you get yourself in trouble because it's not who you are. You know, I mean, it's not. We 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 try to do a good job of. We try to take the same thing we're doing and make it look a little bit different. Exactly. Down there. Yes. Make the exactly. kids on defense think, but make it easier for our kids. We try to do as much of that as we can. And, you yeah, know, exactly. It, it, one of the big things for me, probably four or five years ago, when just kind of breaking down and watching college football on Saturday, is, you know, fewer and fewer teams started bringing in at bigger bodies, you know, because they weren't recruiting that way anymore. I mean, I, I, if Wisconsin is on, I'm watching Wisconsin. And it is, it's, that's, it's one of my favorite things ever to sit there and watch Wisconsin and Iowa. But the reality is most teams aren't recruiting that way anymore. So you saw teams staying more in 11 P maybe getting a little bit of 12. And, and the trend that I started to notice was so many teams running um, what's essentially split zone, but running it with the sniffer on the same side, you know, kind of that, that stay tag where so we're zone and right, leaving the sniffer left. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's been a big part of what we do. Cause you know, when you start looking at why so many teams are doing that, it's, it's safe, you know, te- teams can get in bear. You can body right. guys up, you know, and, and if you're smart with where your back is reading and, and where his eyes are, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it allows you to handle all the stunts and movements down there. And so I, I know for us being a heavy zone team, the three years I've been at Sprayberry, that, that same side split zone because the other thing is you you kind of eliminate some of the burden on that sniffer right if you're asking him to come across the formation if they squeeze tight off a of five you know from a five technique and come off the ass your kids he better have his head up and he better be ready to go but you eliminate you know some of the worry of you know what's the speed of the guy off the edge um you know and and what 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 the block has to be from that sniffer it's just so much easier an average kid has a better chance when you just tell him hey i don't care what happens as long as he doesn't cross your face if you put him two feet away from the guy instead of 10 feet away and ask him to come across the floor i tell you what i tell you what we did also that i would highly recommend because we we stayed which it was not like me as you well some of y'all who well know me we didn't get an 11 and buffalo and all that stuff we stayed a bunch in 11 and we just kept one word we just yep. you know, we we just went down there and by God if it was first down at the three we'd run up there and we would one word like you said inside zone at eleven with a state with a stay concept yep. and or or a power concept and just 
wore people just wore people out with it. I mean, it was just by just by saying the hell with it. It's a one word con. Just keep doing it, you know. Yep. And and that was that was good to us. So like you said, don't get away from what you've been doing from the twenty to the twenty, you know. Uh, yeah, I, Coach, I'm 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 all in on that mentality. Uh, anybody else? Well, I was going to speak on that, um, you know, being who you are, because we were extremely young this year. Started four sophomores on the offensive line, so you were ten personnel. Sometimes, most of the time, empty personnel, uh, and we would get inside the two and stay in empty, yes. stay in three by two. Yep. You know, when your kids feel comfortable with something, why change? Yeah. Yeah, what I believe is. We had a lot of success. So w were you running your quarterback in that scenario, Coach, or were you staying true to your passing game using jet motion, I'm assuming, because you mentioned motion earlier? Yeah, I mean, we would run, uh, like, power read with the jet with jet motion. Uh, if you abandon the box, we would run, uh, like, a Q fold or Q power. Yep. Um, if you, if we essentially would we lose it, see it. So, um, and our quarterback was really, really good, so it was – we couldn't – you couldn't not cover people up like you can most of the time. You know, I, I think I, I went back. Um, I, I really I sat down after our first game of the season this year. We we had a heavy package. It was a, a 12P package that we had put some time into in the summer and put some time into early and um and, and, and throughout the week a little bit. And we go out in the first game and we're we're down, we get down on the one yard line. I tell the head coach, give it to me, let me go for it. And so we, we start with tight end wing on one side, twins in the boundary, trade the tight end and wing into the boundary. So end up with quads over there, essentially, and, and just try to run stretch to it, right, and, and get hats. Um, and just one kid, one kid knifes through, drops the back, we don't get in. And, you know, I, I go and I sit down and I look at it, and the, the thing that I, I just ultimately realized and, and thought about was – it's good. I mean, on paper, we had hats, we had numbers. But if you're only going to practice it for, you know, it, it, it's one of those things, short yardage and red zone, it's such a small percentage of the plays you run throughout the course of the season. But a lot of times we give it an even smaller percentage of practice time. So it's, it's do we devote 30% of our practice time to something that we're going to run 15% of the time in a game, maybe, you know. Um, and, and so I know for me, sitting down and reevaluating, um, kind of how we handled those situations. And I, I think that, that, that we got better, um, you know, as, as the season went on. And that package ended up being a bigger part of what we did. But, but that was as we began to use it. You know, we had some injuries at receiver. So it got more practice time, but it also became something that was a tool for us in the open field, not just short yardage, not just down, um, not just down deep. So, um, so – you know, Coach Corley, I, I like the way that you broke down and talked about carrying um, carrying four plays, you know, from the 22 to 13, 13 to 6, and the 6 and in. Are you going to carry additional two-point plays on top of that, or are your two-point plays going to be built into that? No, our two-point plays were all formation-based. I mean, we ran the same exact plays. We just do the trade, like you just said. We trade to a quads, or, we, you know, yeah. we would make it look like we were real heavy, but we were just running the same stuff. Yeah, um, and, and those would be our one words where we'd have, you know, we'd call one uh, sumo and then another one wrestler where now our guards are lining up at receiver and then we're stacking the guy out there. Just something yeah. goofy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But we're still probably running zone scheme out of it. Right. Um, it was just that, – that was our two-point play. And, you know, it's a little different game in South Florida where, you know, DBs and outside linebackers aren't ID and that you're – your heavy bodies outside as quickly as y'all are up here in Georgia. Uh, so that'll be an adjustment I have to make moving on. Uh, but yeah, that, that was what we did. Anybody else got anything as far as their mentality and the red zone things that they, that they think about? Yeah, I can tell you um, I'm uh, here in Houston. Um, and uh, I liked what y'all were saying earlier. Our, our mentality was uh, throw first, run if you have to. Um, and that really bit us in the ass when we got into the, you know, got within the 15 um, and bit us in the ass in the playoffs, right? So I've worked really hard with the head coach and we're making changes and we're going to have a much different uh, mentality to it. Um, but at the same time, we don't have a, we don't have a kicker worth of shit. So <laughs> if we get, you know, if we get near the 30, 
um, we got four plays. Right. You know, we're we're not we're not going to trot uh, the kicker out there unless we just have to, unless we just get down and make a mistake somewhere close. So um, I think this next year we're going to run more um, of that split zone look out of eleven uh, with the sniffer, and then also um, I'm putting in insert um, with the Y with with bringing him uh, on a speed out too. After we run it a few times, I think we should be able to get him open in the flat, yep. clear out that we've got the X is really good on that side. He'll get doubled. So we think we can we can get some pretty good looks out of that next year. Hey, do any of you guys, do you, do you shy away from RPO calls when you get down in there tight? Or do you, do you guys still still like your, your RPOs, Coach Corley? I stay – I steer clear of them. I think everybody gets so nervous naturally – or not everybody, but 17-year-olds to 14-year-olds get so nervous naturally – being inside there that you know we want to practice rpos and we want to practice red zone and goal line but then how often do any of us practice all three all at the same time right point. Yeah. That, that, that's we we didn't call a single rpo this year i actually just went back because lord knows we have all the time in the world um and <laughs> uh just went back and checked that data we didn't call a single one this year inside the 30 actually we might box we might box call one you know if, if they're a pop, you yep. know, an H pop or something, but, yep. but to, to, to walk into the, like you said, to walk into the play with an RPO, knowing that, you know, how quarterbacks are, I want to throw it no matter what, get behind the chains, you know, no, very, very, very solid. We, we box called a couple times, you know, and that, and we were fine doing that. But again, I, I'm like y'all because next thing you know, those cats want to throw the ball, and you got a whole new set of problems. You know. Well, you I'm, there. there's no doubt. I mean, I spent five years as a defense coordinator, and the number one talk we had every year with our, our kids on defense was quarterbacks by nature are inherently greedy. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and I, I, I could say it because before I was a defense coordinator, I'd coach quarterbacks, you know. And, 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 and I, I tell my kids now all the time that, that, you know, there's a time to be greedy, but there's a time that, to be feedy, you know. And, and, and so – you know, in 2017, I had a kid at quarterback that that was going to be – he was going to be right. He may not be accurate. He may not be always effective. But but he, the, mentally, the decision was going to be right. Um, the guys around him were more likely to be wrong than he was, so we kept him on. In 18, it was – the kid was going to be running the ball. He wasn't going to have an option to throw it. And, and he, even even this past year, um, I'm like, if unless it was a box call, unless it was something I wanted specific or something pre-snap, I could tell him what I wanted. Um, we, we, we were going to call it off too. I, I, I'm always curious to know what guys think when they get down in that situation and, and how they want to handle. RP, um, RP, I mean, that's a whole other discussion, but RPOs are a Ponzi scheme. I mean, that's, <laughs> they are, they're a Ponzi scheme. That's, I mean, they're sexy. They're cool. I'm going to make a million dollars. And the next thing you know, like you said, that, 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 that greedy quarterback has got your ass in a big fucking, got you in a big there's fucking no box, question. You know, you know. Well, and, and, and that's, that, that's, I think, the key is, is, is I think sometimes people get so excited about RPOs. If you're not careful and you don't, um, you, you don't manage your quarterback and his understanding of you're, it, they'll get away from you in a damn hurry, man. You're damn, you'll be in second and ten. And like, what the hell? And telling him, what the hell were you doing, buddy? We, yeah. um, I, I know for us with our ninth grade and JV quarterbacks, we only give them – um, we start off, we only give them pre-snap RPOs, and we control it all from the sideline. Amen, uh, brother. They look over to us. We can signal gift. We can signal read or handoff, or we can signal key screen. You know, Amen. And, and, and that's – I think you have to train them like that, and especially as you start getting down in the damn red zone. Because I'm, I'm with you, man. They, they, I, I love aspects of them, but they can also get away from you. Um, I mean, as we well know, I mean, we're, this is not what we're talking about tonight, but RPOs are there to make those – the overhang and that inside backer on a kick, behave. Yep. Do it to them once, and then they'll behave. And then let's go back to, you know, the adult, the adults, the adults in the room. You know what I mean? Well, it, it, and that's the other thing too is, is you know, you, you get down on inside the red zone, you know, there's no making those dudes behave at that point. They're coming. They're down. Yeah, exactly. They're coming, and there's a guy sitting two, three, four yards off inside leverage, being told everything about don't. You know, I, I, I want to – my goal is to always carry uh, play actions that look like my RPOs, you know, at, the, at that point. And then, you know, try to stem them and, and, and do some different things. How many – I know Coach already talked about three zones, four plays per zone, 
So we're, we're looking at – I'm not a math major, but I think that's 12 plays. How many do you guys typically carry in a week for your red zone package? Anybody? Coach Nichols? Yeah, I, I'd say we probably carry um, about – about a dozen, at least one from from each cash in the middle, um, you know, twenty yards, twenty yard line and in about every five yard increment. Um, just try to be try to be good with balance, you know, being a, a big in personnel team, uh, being able to to run our passing game in space, you know, may even throw a, a few things in there that we don't normally do out of the field, like a speed option, uh, like a little power read that we can kind of guarantee ourselves a positive play that's not too expensive. You're only teaching one or two guys instead of teaching 11 guys a brand new scheme. Anybody else? I'm probably the opposite. I take very little. I have like three run plays, maybe three pass plays. This is our base is what we're doing. And I can rep them over and over and just go fast with them. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, my, my third down stuff is my third down stuff, you know, whether, whether I'm in the red zone or not. Maybe that's not the right approach. Um, but, but so I, 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 I probably carry, you know, from the 20 to the five roughly, I probably have four to five things that I like. Once I'm inside the five, I have another four to five. And then, you know, anything else is just kind of going to be off of our normal script. Um, and, and really, even a lot of that stuff is off of our normal script. I mean, we we have passing concepts that we run out of two by two compressed that I'll run in the open field and I'll run them on the one yard line. Um, you know, so it, it's not necessarily creating a lot. Um, but I so I'm, I'm I'm a little bit the same way. I, I will say this: the one thing that I do, I know Coach Nichols, like you just said with Power Reed. You know, we my quarterback's not a bad runner. But if my quarterback gets hurt, I'm in I'm in a world of damn trouble. <laughs> um, you know, but that's the kind of thing to me. You know, if you're going to run a kid, that's when you make you know, when you need it most is when you make it happen. Um, and and I think you know that's that's a good opportunity down on the goal line. Um, in eight team, we had a, a really good running quarterback, and I thought we did some really good creative stuff for him in the red zone to let him be a ball carrier. Um, but what we got away from it. Coach? Say it again. What was your most successful with the quarterback run? Most successful with the quarterback run game? Well, we ran enough of the the, the, the zone stay or the, you know, the, the split zone with him on the same side um, that, to then just arc off of it or pop off of it and give him a chance to read the end obviously gave us a chance. Um, the other thing is, is we would, um, we would do things where we would um, kind of, share my screen here um we, we would do some things where we would go to um let me find somewhere on here i've hidden some playbook stuff that i not messing up my actual playbook um we would do things like we would show power read um and and actually block um block like counter you know, so so we, we might show whether it was off a of jet motion or not. You know, we would show power read to the left and actually run quarterback counter. That was probably our, our highest percentage um, play in that scenario, in that, you know, those scenarios as far as being pro if production goes. Um, you know, we would we ran a good bit of power read with him anyway. Um, the, those ends, whether they were taught to squeeze or not, we just – all of a sudden they're getting ear hold off that power read look because we didn't run a true counter read like a lot of teams run. So it would give us a chance now to just ride it and then hit it back down inside. Um, that was one of our, our more successful – we even would window dress it out of two back so that now, you know, he, he looks like he's leading. Um, and, and, and get get kind of the same effect. So we had some good success um, doing things like that. You know, we we might even start this guy, whether we started him out wide or started him in the slot, and then we would motion him back this way and then turn around and come back with the counter. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th that was one of our more, you know, 
I, I don't love power read, true power read down on the goal line, but the, the idea of showing it um, and, and then hitting back underneath it, I am a fan of. Um, and, and I found that a lot of times running the counter to the power read action or to the jet action instead of back away from it was even better because we started to get so much of this that we would actually end up hitting that thing super tight front side a and get underneath it um and 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 had some you know so some nice plays let me see if i can um see if i can pull some up here So, you know, like here we would go off of the, uh, you know, off the jet action and go back the other way, which I, I do like, you know, it was more how we ran it in the open field. You know, here obviously we're out on like the 17, 18 yard line, um, but we thought we had a chance to influence some backers. Um, so right here, now we're going to run it. Again, we're showing jet to the right. We're also running counter to the right. Everybody just overruns it. We hit it backside underneath. Or hit you know hit it down tight and again I got a butt shot of that I don't um you know but I, that was a very effective way for us to run it down especially if we started getting ends that were upfield and they were going to mesh charge or, or play upfield on the um on the power read look um that that was a, a good way for us here it is out of split back motion the guy in <laughs> In spills it, we log it, and he bounces. If the tight end freaking gets around and gets to the linebacker there, we got to play. Um, but we that, that was very good to us in the red zone um, th during that season. Anybody uh, – so so most of us seem to carry roughly the same number is what it seems like in the red zone. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> we'll – we are pretty simple as well. Um, you know, we'll carry about eight eight basic plays like everybody else has talked about. One thing that we'll do that Coach Allen kind of talked about because we will do some pre-snap RPOs in the field is we will work our lock pops and possibly, you know, our shot plays off of press coverage a little bit more uh, down there on the, in the red zone. But a lot of the same things that you guys are talking about, I believe in. We're a big one-back power team. Uh, um, so we're doing a lot of the same things as well as everybody else about with mixing in those wide pops. We we scored a lot of touchdowns inside the fifteen yard line on that RPO. We we um we had good success with that in seventeen and eighteen and nobody wanted to give it to us in nineteen. Our uh we went from two years in a row of our tight end leading the team in receptions to our tight end this year had eight catches and on six of them he about got put in the hospital. So he uh I, I think he was just jinxed this year. Um what about passing game when you get down in there, guys, particularly down around the 10? Who, anybody have anything just in particular that you just really love when you get down tight? Say it again, Coach. Switch routes to the boundary. Switch routes to the boundary? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's just such – you're usually in like a cover zero or like a two off or something like that. Yeah. You know, almost like a four match. And it's just so hard for a – Usually, a 16 or 17 year old safety after three steps see that skinny pose coming right behind his shoulder. We um we we we, we try to do some of the same um when we get down in there. We we also I, we um we run a a a good bit of of compressed sets in in our offense, and um and so we we use. A, um, a a decent amount of our our open field passing game down in tight. We we're able to keep keep all of our concepts the same, um, and just uh, just obviously 
you know, we talk about how, how field spacing changes, but for the same reason, you know, if you guys can see this screen, um, you know, the way that we ran Y cross last year um, almost exclusively was from our compressed set and we ran it with the smash on the front side. So we get the speed out here so that we treated that, you know, like our rhythm side, you know, we're, we're basically reading, if we're in the open field and we see zone, we're reading the flat defender down here. We're 100% looking to, to throw the corner route, but then, you know, we, we get, we get the, the cross on the backside and we outside stem. I don't know why it's not letting me draw, but we outside stem this receiver and then bring him, um, you know, outside stem him and then bring him right to the middle of the pylon. Um, and we had him open a lot, but the reality is we, we never had to get to him because we, we, we were able to do a good job, you know, with with this route. Um, when we got teams that wanted to really to walk down left, were so right, worried about bottom. controlling number two, um, you know, we, we felt like it meant that they, they can't be on the same level, right? So they've got to back up and give us number one now. So we now had a chance, obviously, to hit, to hit the speed out. Um, but we, we had a good bit of success from our compressed sets last year. You know, throwing the, 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 the cross or the smash and doing different things. But, I mean, you can see right here, obviously, we hit the corner route, um, and you know, for, for a touchdown. But if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, and you look at this outside receiver going crazy on me. Um, but you look at him outside Stimmett, and then, you know, he, he's wide open there. We've got a chance if we don't hit the official in the head um, to, to, to get him for, for an easy one. Um, you know, same, we we keep all of our run game the same out of it as well, whether it was from the pistol or from the gun, which obviously gives us a lot of good bootleg opportunities in particular. Um, from, from the pistol, we, we like the same. Again, we can carry the same concepts out of our boot game, essentially, um, you know, down there as well. But the, the compressed sets, not on that play, but on the season were, were really good to us um, down, down in tight. Um, you know, same, same kind of concept here, looking to, looking to work a smash route down here to the field. And, you know, this this team was going to play either cover three or man free, and we thought we could get them out of man free and get them to check three by compressing things down there. Because that's the thing. If, if teams are going to spend all this time working, you know, working their man coverage or working their, their, their four or their match or whatever, if I can get them out of it with, with motion and formation, I'm going to do it. You know, so that's another reason that we like all the compressed stuff down tight because – you know, if we're if we're anything spread out right here, we're getting everybody in our face, and these dudes are able to send pressure um, really damn well, and they do some really good things to attack protection. So we knew by compressing them, we could get some soft edges, and you know, at the second and nine, get seven yards down in the red zone, gives us a chance. Um, you know, we also started. You know, coach, you're talking about the switch. Line. This is part of what I was looking for, and we get sacked on this because quarterback just didn't see it but you know off of that same smash look we'll run that corner route we will start him on his out route he'll stick his foot in the ground and then work boom right back to the middle of the field um on, on a, a little switch route and when you talk about teams that are out here and you can see right here i mean these two guys are banjo and one and two when he shows the out route he's thinking he's gone right now he's jumping the corner and the middle of the field is just going to open up uh, big time. And we, we hit this a few times down the stretch. You know, right there, they've, they're have they trying to get the linebacker underneath it. Um, and we just, just protection-wise, the running back whiffs. And they've, they've got a kid that signed with LSU coming off the edge, which usually isn't a good thing for the quarterback. But um, you can see it. I mean, it, it comes open right now um, when we start working those, those switches. Um, See if I can find an, another. You know, for us too, we we've also we've always been big fans of mesh. Um, in in this scenario, um, this was an example of the quarterback being greedy, I believe. I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He no, just he just missed that throw. But um, we, we we've we've been big fans. Here's the sluggo again. 
showing the smash concept. The kid sh should be uh, should be up at the top. There he goes. He shows it. Middle of the field. Um, that was really good to us when we would get teams that just wanted to continue to match and banjo stuff down in there tight. Um, we, we had a lot of success with that concept. Um, you know, it, it, same game now coming from the other side of the field, show the out route, come back underneath, and, and they've got a safety over the top of it because they did a good job collision in two. But, the, the, you know, the, they just kind of lose it. Get our scramble drill into effect. I, I don't know how much time you guys spend working scramble drill. I probably don't give it enough, but the time I do spend, I almost always work my scramble drill in the red zone. Kids, for whatever reason, I feel like in the open field um, do a decent job, but but so often we get so much pressure once we get down inside the 20, and you are limited in space now, and things have to happen fast. So I, I try in the summer especially – um, just when we're throwing our routes on air or our seven on seven on air, working concepts on air, um, I just tell the quarterback, hey, if, if, if you hear me say go, you haul ass and get out of the pocket. I don't care which way you go. Um, and, and I want to see how the kids react. And, and we, we try to do it a lot down here um, because, again, it, everything has to be accelerated. Um, and our kids have done a, a decent job of it. Um, one thing we did for scramble drill, instead of incorporating it and it eating our time, is we would put in our ones to service the defense for the first 10 plays. Yeah. And so we would just – that was our scramble drill time. We, we didn't care how much we were going to yell that because our head coach was a defensive guy. Um, it, it was all about, look, this is our scramble drill. You are never sacked quarterback. You can yeah. just play. Yeah, run around and go. go. That's, that's a good way to do it. Here's another look at the sluggo again. They were they were trying to double the number two guy, ends up leaving number one open and protection breaks down. Let me go one more thing. Um, one more thing I was looking for. Uh, you know, if any of you do a good job, or you know, especially under center, but even from the pistol. I mean, guys, this is as old school. This is 2003 Clemson, but we had a lot of success on our split zone down there going um whether it was under center or from the pistol like this but we started running a ton of split zone and bringing that reverse motion back around again it, it's nothing new but teams aren't doing it like they you know for a while there and what oh four oh five it got real popular um we, we started having success with it a couple years ago and, and really show an option and if you have a quarterback that is a runner having the ability to read it um, you know, obviously, like right here, you know, I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. But um, if, if he'd have stayed front side right there and not gotten bounced back happy, we might have had a chance. But, um, but we had a good bit of success in, with that scheme the past three years um, down in the red zone in particular because you get guys trying to play man-to-man -man and trying to banjo. And we short motion this guy just like a triple option team would do, um, especially when we're in the pistol or in the gun. And when we use that short motion, it immediately triggers somebody. And these guys over here get lost a lot. So we've got play actions built off of it. We've got it built in for run game. Um, but that that has been uh, has been very good for us. Okay, um, now is, there, is there a way for me to show you what we did on our screen right here? Because I have something brought up. As yeah, there's, yeah, Coach. You... Let's, let me uh, – so I am, I'm going to stop share, and okay. if you go, I don't know where share it is screen. on your screen. Share screen. Yep, hit that. Screen. Am I on? Uh, yes, you are. All right. So here's a here's a couple plays in a row from a game that we should have won. So our initial alignment, it's of course our cameraman started late. We were right here, back here, and I had an H back here as well. So I was, un I was unbalanced over here to the boundary right now, in my opinion. I call the boundary my side because that's my side of the sideline. And what we'll do sometimes is we'll send this guy all the way around or we will, uh, we'll just have him come all the way back in orbit. Uh, we'll triple off of it. Um, so here's one example where the quarterback actually reads it really nicely. It's a pitch out in a hurry. Yeah, and what we're seeing a lot out of this, you know, strong pistol or pistol, whatever you want to call it, 
is that they're not accounting for the extra gap that it creates. Right. Uh, that's something that we're seeing a lot of or saw a lot of this past season. Of course, we got a little five foot four meathead there who's all about it. Um, now, on the next play, here's our pre snap alignment. Now, I don't have an H here. I decided to take him out. But we do pretty much the exact same thing just to the field. Now, I think this kid fumbles it here, and he's got nothing but grass. I can go bigger. There we go. Hell, now I'm working. Power. So, he, so yeah, he reads two, two to one gap right here with a power scheme. Boom, we're fine. Go ahead, take your grass. Yep. But this is what we saw a lot of or incorporated a lot of this year. Sorry, I, I can't see my back alignment. I got to move you guys on the other side of my screen here. Sorry. So here's – that's the orbit motion out of it that we would do. Now, if you look at the quarterback's eyes, he snaps them back to the back instead of to the end. So he misses his read because there's only one man responsible for two out here to the field. Yep. Um, and then the other, only other thing I wanted to show you all that we did – Instead of because a lot of coaches have seen this, but we would take this guy right here and we'd align him right here, right next to him. Yeah, uh, so we'd have two back strong. We just called it our army look, um, and, and we would pretty much just run zone read one, zone read two, power read one, power read two, and then we'd run you know, this guy would come in motion around or he'd orbit back as well. That's just something that I wanted to show you all that we did. That was one of our 12 plays. Um, that we kind of brought in there. So now I got to do stop share, right? So, yes, sir. All right, I think I'm good. I know uh, – I see Coach Banks has joined us. I know uh, Brennan Marion, if you're not familiar with him, um, has, has kind of risen up the ranks recently. Um, was was that William and Mary, I believe, is the offense coordinator. Um, but it, it, And has recently put out a book, and he calls it the go-go offense. But I know that um, – I know that he does – a ton of uh, a ton of that with with both backs on the same side, and he really um, he's got some really interesting stuff. If I've, I've purchased his book, um, wanted wanted something to read, and uh, and and really enjoy what I've seen. But he does some really funky stuff where he'll take these two cats and and, and put them next to each other. Um, he'll do it, you know, with the, the extra receiver out wherever. He'll also do some interesting things where, you know, he'll he'll bring this guy in. Um, and I've actually seen him line up with that, that tight end, that sniffer right there. But in his stance, the dude is facing that direction um, with his, his shoulders, per, you know, not square with the line of scrimmage. Um, and it, it's really interesting what, what it does and kind of where – how I feel like it, it kind of changes some things with how the defense plays you. But I know – like I said, I, I know I think I saw Coach Banks on here, and I know they've done some of that stuff. Where's the fucking – um, because it, it it gives you some interesting uh, it gives you some interesting damn options to do some shit. You know, when you start talking about wheeling two guys out of the same side into the boundary, um, you know, with a, some kind of an inside route. It's um, not down there. It, it really uh, it really really puts them in a bind. Now you talk about, you know, if you get a look like this, who's got number three? Right. You know, and they're, if they're down in here, you know, if, if I'm getting one high, then we're probably going to be working, boy. you know, something there. And now you turn around and swing or wheel this guy into the boundary. Um, you you put, the, put those guys in a hell of a bind. Um, but it also gives you a ton of wrinkles in the run game, Coach, like no. you were saying, no, to be able to uh, – especially if you got some guys that are willing to block, you know, to, to, to run power here. Right. You know, with him downhill or – um, I know, like, you know, with Coach Marion, he'll do things where he'll he'll run OT. You know, he'll he'll pull these cats. And he'll insert the T and where the – He'll insert – yeah, either one of them, you know. Yeah. And, um, and, and he, the other thing that I, I think is interesting, too, is it just – you know, it's coming from a different place, but you also get the opportunity, you know, you can load this guy and, right. and still cross him and read the end. and gives you some really interesting things to do um, I, I think in the run game, in the passing game, um, you know, if you've got the right bodies there to, to do it in particular. The coolest thing out of the pass game, Coach, was the pass pros that you could change with it. So you had it where your tight end or your Y was facing in. We would do it where the Y is facing out. And we do, do a full line slide that way. And we do a very similar concept to so a switch route, what you drew up earlier. 
Um, I mean, that it was our bread and butter because we're we're not six two across the front. We're five ten on a good day, maybe one hundred ninety pounds. Yes. It, there, there's there's some very interesting stuff there. It's some stuff I've started to study. I, I can't. Yes. I'd be lying if I said it was something that I've I've done a ton of or that I've I've spent a lot of time on. Um, you know, in in the past few years, but it's certainly something I'm looking at. How many of you guys use mesh down in the red zone? That's our go-to. I it it, it is it has been huge for us um, uh, over the past few years. It's not something that we run a ton of in the open field, unless we're dealing with the short yardage situation. But we we pick. You know, we're either going to start in bunch or we're going to start in two by two, no motion, and get the back in the flat or we're going to start in two-by-two two motion and then leave the back end. That's kind of where we've gotten to um, in the past. We're going to carry at least one of those in every week as part of our two-point red zone, short yardage goal line stuff. And I know there's a lot of people, especially people that aren't Air Raid fans that are not big fans of mesh. Um, it's been great for us because of the horizontal stretch it creates. You know, we, we can make things happen fast. I mean, here, you know, th this was – this was a it, fourth and three, um, fourth and two, whatever that we, we had to have to win the game. And um, so we, we get our fastest guy in motion. Don't make him get set. We just let him shuffle. So we get him to the flat right now. We're going to go set the mesh. We get him underneath. And, you know, our, our corner route, um, you know, we, we tell those guys down there in particular – you know, if this guy turns and runs to the flat right now, get your head around. And if the guy gets any depth, we really kind of break the route off. Um, and it doesn't even become a corner. We kind of start it, and then we'll settle and look back inside. And you can see right here, um, I mean, that, you know, there, there was no doubt that, you know, that this is what we're running in this situation. And we were able to give it enough time during the week and during the summer that, um, you know, I, I just I feel like it could be very difficult for teams to uh, for teams to defend. Yeah, so we, we had a lot of a lot of success in our two by two compressed like you you are there, and uh, pushing the back out of the backfield pre motion. Yep. Um, I mean, it tells your quarterback everything he needs to know. Is, is that inside linebacker going to chase the back, or is that are they going to bump it off? Uh, it's it is really 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 good to us this season. It it, it has been good for us, um, you know, for for a couple of years now. I mean. Just looking at red zone clips, I mean, you know, I've, I've only got it on there called seven times. And one, two, three, four of them were actually two-point calls. Um, and that's all we've used it in every one of these. One's on the 23-yard line and the rest of them are all inside the five. Um, and so, you know, it's not it's not necessarily like a, something that we're going to go in and, and run a ton of in, in every game. Um, but but we've, we've found – different ways to run it we found different ways to window dress it um you know you can see here two by two um now we're just going to get the back out in the flat you know we, we you know right there and we get the pass interference but 100 percent right there could have hit the tailback in the flat i think we actually I, we lined up the next play and run split zone um but we feel like it, it gives us a safe outlet um you know a lot of, we've already watched that one um you know, same deal here. Another team here before, you know, get the back out. Nobody expands the three. Give it to him right now. Let him outrun somebody to the pylon. It's been a been a real good formation for us. Um, you know, those those compressed sets down there, and been, been a really good. Um, just a, a really good, you know, mesh has been a play for us in those scenarios as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of like you know Franklin system purists, they want to run it like. X, you know, Mummy on Twitter blew up because he called Mesh like 40 times or something that XFL game. Yep. yep. You know, and I think a lot of people, you know, the settle and run and all that, it's an expensive teach. But if, like you said, if you only run it in goal line situations or you only run it on third down and you can almost guarantee you're going to get man to man, you don't have to teach the settle. You know, I agree. And, and that's the other thing, too, is, I mean, you know, what we're using it for, I mean, you know, first of all, when I'm running it down there in the goal line, like you said, very rarely are we going to get the opportunity to settle. 
Right. right. It, it, it's almost always he's going to end up running it out. And we're, we're almost 100% looking to really just set a screen for him. Right. Um, but um, I think um, the other thing that I like about it is, is it can be versatile. I know that I, um, I, um, I've had, you know, opportunity or, or success, I guess, before uh, running it in a pro style offense where, um, you know, we would run it as a bootleg, you know, we would, um, we would, we would just, whether it was running it naked off of outside zone or running it off of our counter boot, um, we, we would do the same things, man. We would get in twins and, um, and, and run a corner or a comeback with the outside receiver run number two on the pick tight ends working the, the shallow and where it's all about, can we hit the fullback in the flat? If not, we're working that, that rub route. Um, and I, I know I've had success running it like that. And I know, I know some other good coaches have, have done the same. Um, I, I just saw coach where he uh, asked about, uh, have we talked about two point plays? Um, if somebody asked about that in the chat, um, I, we've kind of discussed two point plays. How many of you, like I said, go into a game, um, your two point plays are standalone. There's going to be those one or two that are special and unique. And how many of you are just going to rely on your base stuff when you get in those situations? We just use the base. I, I, we have a couple of things every week. Um, we, we do a red zone period on Wednesday, typically. Um, at least half of my script in one of my periods, usually against the scout team, is going to be um, it, working. And we, we'll, we'll go, you know, we'll go something like 15-yard line, 10-yard line, 5-yard line, 2-yard line, um, and, and just mix up the hash and the plays. And, um, you know, anything we don't use a lot of times gets carried over. Like if we work some type of a sprint out with a throwback, you know, if we don't use it on a Friday night, it gets carried over, and we try to keep as much of that as, as possible. Um, but that's that's really, I mean, we give, you know, anything unique in particular, we're going to give it that script on Wednesday, and then our Thursday practice is in the morning. Um, and, and, and I'll say this, if, if you play on Friday night um, and you your kids have the means to get to your school, practicing early, we start it. Our kids are expected to be on the field at 6.30 a.m. Thursday mornings. Um, we do it for a lot of reasons. Our, our um, freshman JV teams play on Thursday night, um, and our coaches have to go coach those games. So we, we don't have guys running around trying to organize a practice with half a staff. We get everybody there on Thursday morning. If you're on this too deep on any special teams, offense or defense, you're there. The other thing is, uh, you know, early in the season in particular, it gives you a chance to get under the lights and get kick returners under – you know, under the lights, catching a football. Um, and, and we run through a game script, but I get, you know, roughly 20 minutes on my own. And when we go through all that, you know, almost anything we do Thursday morning is going to be opening script, fixing anything that I'm worried about walking off the field on Wednesday, and then everything else about it is red zone and, and goal line, and it's on air. Um, and, and just making sure that, that, that we're all on the same page with what we want to do. But that's been a very good approach for us, I think, um, as far as how we handle our red zone preparations. Does anybody do anything differently? Anybody – I know I've talked to a guy before that he starts his week with red zone. The first thing they install on Monday and the first thing they do, and I, that, that was completely foreign to me and not something I've ever done. Is there anybody else that has a different approach for maybe how they break it down throughout the week or anything that they do differently? We always have a either fourth and third and short period uh, during the week, and I feel like those plays always translate to yep. a two point situation or um, you know fourth and one and, and, and or a goal fourth and goal. I'm going to run those those plays that we run, and we typically do about seven to ten and spread those plays out throughout uh, on uh, Wednesday or I'm sorry Tuesday and Wednesday. So pretty much the same thing. Coach McPeak. You guys do anything? How do y'all handle it? Coach, we do um, – we act, we practice on Thursday morning like you guys as well. Um, we'll have a two-point play section on Thursday. Now, on Monday, we will walk through our two- to three two-point plays. Uh, we don't do anything full speed on Mondays. 
Um, and then I will mix them in on Wednesday for full speed against scout team. And then Thursday morning, we'll walk them on the air. Uh, but we'll go into each week with three two-point calls. Um, normally, one of those is, you know, a run, just a run game call yep. that I would normally call. And then we'll have a specialty like, you know, why hide or we call it yep. delay where they're delaying that inside receiver running double slant. Um, that's always open. It's hard to cover. Um, you know, we'll mix those in at a different sets, different formations, different personnels, um, you know, but we do a lot of the same schedule that you're talking about. We do freshman JV in Kentucky on Mondays, yep. but um, we go Thursday morning and we we made that investment three years ago and it's been awesome. The kids love it. Um, we don't ask our young kids to show up, but all of our varsity best guys and um, if, if teams can do it, I would suggest you give it a try because it's, it's really nice and the kids enjoy it. Yeah, I, I've been doing it for several years now, and I, that's, that's it's, you know, I'm going to do whatever I'm told to do. Uh, but, but if they ask my opinion, I will always vote for that, that early morning, that Thursday morning. It's a, it's a, it's a really yes, good, good way. Gives your kids, too. We always tell our kids, you know, we bring our varsity kids in after school and we do a short film session with them. Um, it just kind of the, the putting everything to bed, showing them some of Wednesday's practice. And then um, it gives them a chance, you know, if they need to make up a test, if they need to go to tutoring, we tell them that's the day you do it. And then we tell those varsity kids, man, y'all go be together, go hang out, go eat dinner together, and then try to get back to the game, you know, whichever game is on our campus. Because our, our freshmen are usually one place, JV another. Um, at the same time, so it's it's certainly been good for us. I think at the different schools that I've I've done that, and I'm a I'm a big fan. Anybody have any specific questions regarding red zone two point plays? Any schemes you want to ask about? Any schemes you want to show us? Yeah, nothing, coach. All right. I've looked at something I'm going to try this year. Yes, sir. I don't know how good it's going to go or not. Um, under like a two-minute drill type deal, stopping the clock, hey, we're inside the red zone, and I'm going to teach my quarterback. He's going to be running down the field, yelling, you know, motioning like he's spiking the ball, and then we're going to line up and just see if we can't hit it, you know, and try and catch that defense sleeping a little bit. We – um. We, we had that built in one season and we worked it, we worked it, we worked it, and we never had a chance to use it. <laughs> and I, I, I don't think I've ever done it since, but I, I know, um, you know, I, I know guys that carry it that have a buzzword for it every week um, for, for sure. Um, here's a question for you guys that, that, that tempo and, and, and go fast. Um, I know in one of the earlier sessions that we've done of these, you know, I, took the job the goal was to be tempo and after I think game two we sat down as a staff and decided the best thing for our kids was slow down help our defense help our kids offensively we didn't have a ton of depth and so we have always had the ability to go fast but most of the time we don't uh, how many of you tempo guys really focus on maintaining that tempo in the red zone and how many of you find that it's harder to maintain that tempo when you get down in there Coach, we normally slow it down, to be honest with you. Um, just because, as everyone here knows, you got to score in the red zone. So uh, we want to make sure we take it out of the kids' hands in that situation and make sure it's in our hands and make sure we make the right call. So we'll, we'll do a lot of – we'll freeze it, see it, and then call it uh, yep. down there just to make sure we're, we're, in, we're in control. I, I feel like most – I feel like most tempo teams are, are, are very much the same way. And a lot of it, I think – you know, you do get teams that change personnel, and 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 most teams do do obviously have to slow down um, to to change personnel. So I I feel like that's the case for most teams. Does anybody feel like they're able to maintain their tempo? I, I main, maintain and what I'd actually like are two different things. I, I understood. <laughs> I, I will say this, man, I, and I, I will. I've had multiple conversations with guys on that staff about how they did it. But in 2013, we went 13, 14, whatever year it was, we went down to, uh, to Colquitt County when Rush Probst was still the head coach there. And I have never seen a team at any level be as effective as they were 
at changing personnel and not slowing down their tempo. And, and that was the biggest thing because we knew they were fast. Rush has always been a, a, a tempo guy. And, um, and, and we watch them on film, and I'm like, okay. They changed personnel a good bit. Like, they had the ability to line up in 20p with two tailbacks and the next snap being 10 and the next snap being empty and, you know, whatever. But, um, but their ability to go from 11 to 12 to true 10 to 20p um, with a sniffer, 20p with two tailbacks, I thought, okay, they do it a good bit, but it's not from drive to drive. It's within the drive. I'm going to have a chance as a defense coordinator to catch my breath. My kids are going to catch their breath. I'm going to be able to make calls based on personnel. Never seen anybody maintain that tempo and change personnel groupings, and it barely changed when they got into the red zone. And, and it, was, it was hell. My kids came off to the sideline going, Coach, what the hell? You know, because all of a sudden they're having to identify and call strengths based on our game plan and different things. Um, and, and, and they had the bodies to do it offensively, and they had the staff to be able to organize it and obviously to be able to practice it. Um, and, and, you know, when you talk to some of the guys that were on that staff about um, how they did it, man, it was an impressive operation. I've always told myself – if I'm ever blessed enough to be at a place where we've got 87 coaches and 87 kids that can actually play, um, that, that we're going to shoot for the same. Um, because I can tell you, if you can do that, if you can change your personnel without changing your tempo and you can stay foot on the gas, man, it is hell on the defense. More so than, you know, teams that are going to line up in two by two and three by one 10 P or two by two and three by one 11 P and never change. It, it is what it is. Defenses can adjust. It's, it's, you're either, you're either well coached and sound on defense or you're not, you know? Um, but when you can change personnel that damn fast, man, and stay on the gas, it's hell. Um, so if you're a tempo guy and you're going to use personnel packages, man, more power to you if you can get that stuff done. Cause it, uh, it it's it stresses the hell out of a defense. Well, something we had, we had really good success this year. We were, you know, we got in the red zone fifty times. We put points on the board eighty six percent of the time. Um, a lot of that is because we had a hell of a quarterback. But our tailback could go down and play sniffer, and our tight end could split out. So we could jump, like you were saying, we could go from empty to two back to mm-hmm. eleven personnel. You know, tray to and bounce it around. And a lot of defenses really struggle because, as you know, as a D.C. or former D.C., you put that tight end down, that changes all the rules. For and sure. And now that changes all the rules. So, I mean, we would freeze it sometimes, and then we'd go fast sometimes. Nothing like what you're saying. Obviously. Yeah. We weren't able to go that fast. But we were able to jump in and out of things very quickly if we wanted to. Yeah. I, I, for us next year, this will be the first time. The last three years, we've had tight ends that, that – you know, our base personnel was an 11P personnel, but we would line up in 10P formations whenever we wanted to, and the guys were good enough to flex out and, and good enough to attach and do different things with. And, um, you know, next year we, we won't have that. It's, it's If I have a kid that's an inline tight end or a sniffer, that is what he is. I'm not going to have one that can do I, – there's two kids on my team that can probably do it. They also start on defense, and, and if we don't want to score 50 a game, we need them playing defense. Um, and believe me, I'd love to score 50 a game, but I don't ever want to have to score 50 a game. Um, so um, – I just think, Pete, that uh, you just – you know, we talked about that. I just – I can't go – I'm not as fast as I used to be anyway, but I yeah. just – in the red zone, you got to score points. I think yep. the red zone is kind of one of them things, especially in the five in. Even though they play defense, if you need them in the five in, you got to use them. That that one that's so important that you got to have a red zone plan. And if you think it involves H backs and tight ends, then go get them. That is that is certainly one thing that we've talked about, you know, as an offensive staff. And and I, I you know, we we actually last year we took every kid on our roster and trained them at two positions. And for 85% of our roster, that meant an offensive position and a defensive position. For the other 15%, it might have been he trained as, you know, a safety and an outside linebacker, or he trained as a center and a guard. Um, and, And so, you know, quarterbacks were really the only ones that didn't really work another position, I guess. Hell, even, even our kicker, you know, played in the secondary and started a few games. And so, um, 
So that, that really helped us because what, you know, what our goal was, you know, you take Christian Mergler, who's one of our defensive linemen, and he is just a big rockhead um, that wants to be physical and play fast. And he's a hell of a defensive lineman. And if we took him full time, he would be one hell of an offensive lineman. But the reality is where I was best served was when we get inside the 10 and I need to put an extra body in there to block down or kick out, he could do it. And it didn't take a lot of work as long as I kept the package small to make sure he could do it. Um, and I, I, I'm with you, Coach. I, I think that um, one of the things that I've, I've heard some guys talk about is, um, you know, from, from 20 to 20 – is, is, is any man's ball game. You can put any kid out there, and as long as you're doing a good job, you're going to have a chance to, to be competitive. But when you get inside the 20, whether you're backed up or whether you're going in, um, your best dudes have to be on the field. You know, and, and so if that means taking an offensive lineman and putting him at nose all of a sudden, you know, that's our job right at that point to keep, to keep the package simple and um and and make sure that, that the kids can execute so I, I agree with you coach banks you know like i said that's that is something that we did last year that that really it, it, it was you know it was of, of of great benefit to us um and i was already a conversations that we'd had as a staff as we were starting our spring ball prep was you know what what were we going to do with our kids this year who what were their positions and we had assigned everybody the same way and, um, you know, I, I think, you know, we're, we're a decent size school. We don't have to play a ton of kids both ways, um, truly. But um, but the best players have to be on the field when it matters the most. And that, that's, a, that's a great way, particularly in the spring and in the summer, I, I think, to kind of kind of build that mentality. One quick question. Uh, how many of y'all – so I started noticing that my backed up game or my backed up plays were so similar to – my red zone plays that I just got I, – I got out of game planning differently. I mean, my, my same 12 plays that were red zone ended up being my same 12 that were backed up. Is that similar, different? What do we I – mean? I, I, No, I, I, I don't disagree. Um, particularly the run game stuff, I, I, there's a lot of similarity with what I was doing because you know, I, I feel the same way, especially if I'm really backed up. Um, teams are going to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, and so um, from, from that mentality – you know, with their front and with their linebackers. So I used a lot of the same run game principles um, backed up. What I probably don't do a good job of is I'm probably not aggressive enough throwing the football in those situations. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I I got man, down there. Thanks, you call four I verts when you're backed up, there. don't you? <laughs> yep, I was on Max Press for that about two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Bowden's old philosophy, you get me on the one-yard line, somebody's getting ready to score you or me. So, and you've been in D.C. before, like you said, y'all get aggressive. So, yep. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to might be in 21P, but if we're in 21P, then we're going to run inside zone with a, a post or a fade because you're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. And if you, if I got the dudes, I'm going to spread you out and probably call four verticals too. Well, and, and you've, you've I, Lord knows there's been years where you've had some dudes. There's no doubt about that. I, I know, I'll say this, I was probably more aggressive when I was coaching in a pro-style offense. You know, in, in, in 2008, when we were based, I mean, our, our damn base run game was 31P. Um, that was our offense. I mean, tailback ran for over 2,000 yards and signed with Tennessee and all that fun stuff. But when we were backed up, it didn't matter whether or not the kid out there wide was, was average or not. If we went max protect and play action off of our power, he was going to get behind somebody. Um and, 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 and was good. I, I will say this, the one thing that I really probably did a good job of with this year as far as us being aggressive, um, and, and we do it from our compressed sets, we do it from our spread, um, but I, I do especially like it, um, you know, I, out of the compressed stuff is, is we, um, you know, the, the Lincoln Riley likes the, the double post play action. Um, and when we do, we like it out of our compressed sets because, again, I feel like I can get some guys in a bit of a bind. Um, but we will, we will play off of our inside zone fake, um, our, our same side zone fake here. And so we'll play action off of that. And we'll, we got a couple different ways we'll run it. We'll run it here with the speed out. We'll run it here where he's got a chance to really leverage him and get there. 
we'll leverage him and get there so we can run it like that. And then we will also, um, and one of my favorite ways to run it is we'll outside leverage and be here to the near hash. And then we'll let him clear and then get right now to the middle of the field. Um, it, it is a great way to, to seven man match protect, take a shot. And we got to the point and then Tyler, I think you're on here. And I think we hit this against you guys after we've, you know, we've shown it on film or whatever, we'll start wheeling this thing up. And we just tell the quarterback, if we get one on one and this safety's down tight, just, you know, we're going to read this first. Um, and it's all about a shot play for us. Um, but we, we had a good bit of success running our variations of that, particularly from our compressed stuff, but also from out wide. And that was probably our best way of taking a shot backed up because, again, it gave me a chance to protect with seven. It gave me a chance to, to, uh, to attack vertically. And um, we had some explosive plays, and we also had some explosive penalties off of it um, that, that were good to us. So, and that, you know, that's obviously not something we use a ton in the red zone. We'll, we, we'll use it if we're in the, the high red, if we're in the 2022, especially with the out and up. You know, that corner sees that out. He drives it like crazy, and the damn, um, the damn out route will be wide ass open. Um, anybody kind of got any final thoughts as far as red zone goes? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one more thing, fellas, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up. However, um, one thing we started using a good bit late in the season last year that we are going to go get back to, and it's nothing new. Again, I, I don't claim to be a genius, and I sure as hell didn't invent anything. Um, but we, we started running both from a 10 piece set and with a nub tight end from an 11 piece set. So many teams, you know, if you walk out and you stack or you put one and two close together, so many teams are used to working this alert. You know, the, these two dudes are used to working the banjo between those two guys. Um, I don't think teams spend a ton of time working that, that alert between two and three. Um, and we, we had some success, and, and damn, should have won our first-round playoff game against a really good football team. We, we, we had a guy that, that – that, that should have been wide open here and, and, and just botched the damn route and ran right at the safety. Um, but we, we started having some success in the red zone, um, working our, our mid zone stuff and throwing, um, throwing the key screen out here to him. And then off of it, obviously being able to throw like a Y stick. And when we got down in there in the red zone, the one that we really started working a lot was, we would post this guy and treat it as our rhythm route and he would slow play it. Like he's out here working, working to stalk and then leak out late and get to the front pylon. And we would still bubble this guy off the look and play action. And so from the defensive perspective, it looks just like the RPO where we're working that swing. Um, but what we found was, you know, we'd end up with him flat, him being patient for that stick route. And we're just looking from one, to two on that back side, and we had it wide. I mean, it, it literally was wide ass open. This corner is carrying him, and for some reason, the knucklehead runs vertical and runs right into the corner who bats it down um, instead of working to the pile line because this safety had no clue where he was on the field. Um, so we've started doing a lot of stuff like that because, again, I think that you put them in a bind now when they're wanting to play man-to-man -man and they're wanting to do some things to alert down there um, in the red zone, I, th I think I think you can make it difficult for a defense to pass off two and three. Um, and in all of our normal concepts, I mean, we, we think we can run almost anything we want out of it. You can run mesh, you can run drive, you can run whatever. Four verts is the hardest one to run like that, for sure. So, anybody got anything else, man? No, sir. That was good. Man, I appreciate y'all coming. We call that same play lock. L lock. Yeah, because we got the key game, and then you got the lock yep. game. Got the lock, yep. So, fellas, I appreciate it. Um, Thanks, I, this appreciate is recorded. It. It'll be up on the website if you got here late. Um, I'll, I'll post a link to it tomorrow. But, man, I appreciate it. If you got some ideas for Wednesday, uh, we'll do this again. Uh, just holler at me, send me a text or something, a DM. Uh, with some ideas you got, we'll cover any topic. And if one of you wants to freaking take control 
on the topic uh, on Wednesday, just let me know, man, and we'll, we'll make it happen. So appreciate y'all. Hope uh, hope everybody got something good. I know I've got some notes written down and um, look forward to thinking it through. So have a good one, man. Stay healthy. Thanks, Thanks Pete. All right, guys.